In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer questions asked by listeners like you. What they do is they go to our Instagram page, Mind Pump Media. They post a question. We pick mm. our favorite ones, and we answer them. Now, we open this episode with fun conversation between the three of us. We talk about our lives, studies, and super random Even stuff. Even more fun stuff. And so. random stuff. So here's what we covered in this episode. We start out by talking about um, Adam's glistening skin. He's got some nice looking skin these days yeah. because he's been using Caldera it's products. Like, it's like a sheen. These are all natural products you can apply to your skin. Uh, very nice stuff. We have a discount code for you. Go to calderalab.com. That's C-A-L-D-E-R-A-L-A-B.com forward slash mind pump. And you'll get 20% off your first Caldera Lab purchase. Uh, then we talk about uh, protein intake. I talk about ideal amounts of protein and how I'm recommending to one of my friends that they increase their protein intake. Um, and, of course, that led us right into different types of protein, mm. uh, animal protein versus plant protein. One of my favorite plant protein companies, Organifi, uh, they make a delicious plant protein that's a high-quality amino acid profile. Um, we have a discount for you. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump and use the code Mind Pump, you'll get 20% off and on Cyber Monday, you get an additional uh, 20% off and free shipping. Boom. Then we talked about the bathrooms uh, in uh, the back here. They are getting worked on finally. It's a miracle. They were destroyed before. Then it gets really weird. Justin talks about this video he sent us about Chuck Berry. Hey. I'm not going to tell you that much more about it. You're welcome, everybody. You're going to have to listen to the episode you to find out welcome. what kind of video we found on him. Uh, then we talked about one of our fans. Uh, shout out to James Herman. Got first place at his first OCR race using our program. You're Maps the man. OCR. I talked about Shark Tank. I just discovered it, so don't make fun of me. Uh, great, great <laughs> oh, show. Oh, we did. Don't worry. Justin talks about his kid's invention. It wasn't that exciting. You can skip that part. It was a lot. <laughs> it was very exciting. Very engaging. <laughs> then I talked about a study on how leg training affects the nervous system. And I talked about a study from Harvard. Uh, it's a 75-year study on the secret to happiness. And then we get into the questions, and we start answering people's questions. The first question, what are some good stretches to increase squat Mobility. So we go over that. Next question. This person works as an Uber driver, but their hips and butt hurt from dry, from sitting so long. They want to know uh, what are some exercises or things they can do in between trips to relieve pain. Mm. Next question. This person wants to know what the most effective way to bulk is. So we talk all about bulking, packing on muscle. And the final question. This person's asking us if we think that food affects your brain and mood. And we talk about uh, how that may actually be happening. Also, right now, you are very lucky if you're listening to this episode when it's getting released. Black Friday sale. This is by far the biggest sale we do of the year. This Re is the one. Ready for this? All MAPS programs, except for one, except for MAPS Powerlift, but every other MAPS program. So that's MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Performance, MAPS OCR, MAPS Strong, Prime, Prime Pro, uh, Anywhere. I think I'm missing one. Starter. All 50% off. Everything is 50% off, including our guides and our mods. Mods where we have individual body part uh, type workouts. So that's all 50% off. But there's more. We have bundles where we take multiple mass programs and put them together. We have like a hard gainer bundle. We have the, the business person bundle. We have a bundle that's got most of our most important programs called the Super Bundle, which will take you an entire year to complete. AKA the Bundle of Love. It's awesome. We have bundles. All those bundles are already discounted, so they're already about 30 to 35% off retail. Well, we took an additional 25% off all bundles. This is all happening for Black Friday. This promotion starts when you're listening to this, but it ends uh, midnight on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. So you need to act quickly. It's a very short sale. Holy smokes. Here's what you do to get the discounts. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. And if you want 50% off individual programs, guides, or mods, use the code BLACKFRIDAY50. That's B-L-A-C-K-F-R-I-D-A-Y-5-0. No space. And if you want 25% off all bundles, use the code BFBUNDLES. I want to know, Adam, exactly where you've been using your caldera. The, the, the oil? I want to get personal here on the podcast. You do use a lot of that oil. because no, I see you rubbing it all the time. I mean, it's on your head, it's on your face, you know, like, uh, where else? You I, rubbed it on your legs, your hands, your arms, your well, beard. All the, 
Yeah, I, and, I, and why? Like, what's your reasoning? Yeah. Well, I I use it on. Uh, well, it started. I was just using the the serum on my face, which that sounds really. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound it's a little serum. Yeah, but you yeah, know what? I'm still serum. with you there. Yeah. 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 So it, it it started with that. Uh, which, by the way, uh, I I we got a bunch of DMs for so people. So uh, when we first started with uh, um, Caldera, we did a, a, a story on the Mind Pump Media page. And it was, you know, me applying it to my face. I think you did too, Sal. I'm not sure if it was. Mm-hmm. I think Rachel filmed both of us. We were, we were putting it on each other's face. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. it was. But That's I got intimate. She got a bunch of DMs of people actually saying that they're, you're supposed to, when you put serums or <clears throat> wash your face, you're actually supposed to do it in a direction. Oh, Did you really? guys know that you're supposed Why? to? You're so, 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 it's like going with the grain versus against yeah. it or something. <laughs> yeah, this is getting too crazy. Yeah, yeah. maybe Why? Doug, you can look it up. Like uh, when when washing, or do you do you just always rub just, it in the same way? No, no, it's like supposed circular to be circular. It's supposed to be up. Down. So when 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 applying face serum or uh, washing your face. Is there a purpose to the direction or whatever? Something Google. I don't know. Google. <laughs> Google <laughs> do your, things. You out do there, your yeah. job and figure out what I'm trying to get at here, please. <laughs> <laughs> but they, so a bunch of people were were DMing. They said that you messed up. Yeah, saying that we were doing it wrong. I didn't know you could do it wrong. Are you and, serious? Yeah, in the first place. I'm so. trying to think right now. Pores of the face are circular. Wow. Uh, I, I could see rubbing it on hair. How you might want to put it in a certain direction, mm-hmm. but on skin, why? I don't know, I, but there was quite a few people. It wasn't just one person. Now you have you're normally dry skin. Yeah. So ju- I mean, to Justin's question originally, sorry, I got distracted. Yeah, got derailed. From that there. Weird question yeah. you asked me about. Hey, uh, that's how I roll. I I have psoriasis, so uh, yeah, I have abnormally dry skin. And instead of using the steroid creams that like my dermatologist gives me all the time, uh, using this natural serum actually does the job. It's been awesome. Mm. So. I've actually completely stopped using um, the steroid creams that I have, and all I use is the serum. So when it starts to get dry like that, all right. So when you see me putting it on my leg or on mm. my side, uh, top of my head, and so like that, I, I have all these little mm. spots that I I try and stay on top of. Where well, your skin does look moist, nice <laughs> and uh, supple. <laughs> People don't like when you use that word. They don't like that word. Yeah, on yeah, yeah, moist. Yeah. That was a bit. That was not. I don't understand who decided that was a bad word. That word used to be in all the commercials moist. when I was a kid. Every commercial you saw on TV Especially for any type of a cake or pie or whatever, they'd say, "Wow, it's so moist, so moist." All of a sudden, it became, it became disgusting. Nobody yeah. can. Oh, Doug, Doug found you, something. Did you find something, Doug? <clears throat> something here. To apply, use a similar motion to your face, gently rubbing upward until the pro- product is evenly distributed, and the upward motion is key to help. It helps encourage tightening and lifting. Of the delicate skin that's extra prone to drooping. So when you're, wow. this is for your neck skin, by the way, Adam, not the other one. <laughs> Stupid. So I, that's yeah. that's not true. Okay, so now that's, 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 I, did, I feel like that's baloney. Yeah. So okay, now I've heard it's been debunked. Okay. So Rachel, like you know, made me privy to it after we did that. She said, "Oh, uh, you know, supposedly you're doing it wrong. You're supposed to do it this way." I believe it was Danny. Uh, I'm Upward sure it's strokes. It's, it was one of my little nerdy friends that uh, you know went on the. The rabbit hole of research to figure out if there was any truth behind this, and so <laughs> yeah, it's, he said he says it's, he says it's not true. Yeah, of course he not. says that uh, he and I don't know if it's he talked to his dermatologist or he found an article on it to kind of debunk it. But it's like when your skin's sagging, you just kind of rub it up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. what they're basically saying. Push it. Yeah. Push, push it back push, up. Push yeah, it back uh, yeah. up. Yeah. Use a lot of strength. You know? I didn't even know that was a thing, dude. Though. Talking about ta- you, you brought up steroid creams. You reminded me when I was a kid. I had a we had a family friend who I was overheard him. This is when I first started working out. So I'm like 14 maybe, and I overheard him talking to my my parents about how he had to use uh, steroids because his back hurt. And I didn't know there was a difference between. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, whoa, that's awesome. I didn't know there was a difference between yeah. anabolic steroids. So, did you get his cabinet and take and, it? You no. Know, I, I for, <laughs> it's open. You're going to get I it. formulated a plan to fake like pain. Like, yeah. oh, I'm going to pretend like my back hurts. <laughs> I'm going to go to the doctor and they're going to give me steroids. Like, I'm not stronger, but I don't have asthma anymore. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna yeah. Give, exactly. They're going <laughs> to give me steroids and we get jacked. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. I remember I talked to somebody about it. I'm like, dude, you can get steroids if something hurts. We're like, <laughs> <laughs> It'll actually do the opposite. You're going to lose muscle. Hey, you know? hey, speaking of uh, jacked, uh, you're putting on some size over it's there. Too, Be- it's beef too, cake. Beef cake. Too much. Beef cake. Yeah. It, it's more cake than beef now. I think it's <laughs> it cake. Is. 
Cake beef. Then yeah. you turn into cakes. Yeah, no, over I over here. I what, uh, what are you what are you doing with your diet right now? Is your diet obviously your <clears throat> diet? I'm assuming you're if you've increased calories. Yeah, my calories are higher. Protein intake is higher because my body weight's higher. So right now I'm I'm tipping the scales. <laughs> like at night, uh, I've reached as high as two eighteen. Um, during the day, I'm around 214, 215. That's with clothes on, with clothes off, probably closer to 213. I don't know. It's around that. So my protein now, I've bumped up to about 190 grams or 200 grams, which, you know, it's not that easy to hit that with food. I was just going to ask you, I know that I'm the one who talks about uh, really struggling with hitting those numbers. Like I've uh, admitted that you know, obviously I'm always targeting to get from real food, but when I'm pushing 200 grams of protein, it's, it's not, it's probably more consistent that I miss, uh, hitting that. Than, well, dude, that's than, four, that would be four meals with 50 gram and 50 grams of protein is a large serving of meat. Yeah. That's a big steak or yeah. a big piece of chicken. And that's four times a day to hit 200. Right. Mm. This is where protein powder for me, uh, makes, uh, you know, makes a big difference. Actually, in fact, uh, Arthur Brooks, I've been, uh, talking with him back and forth. Mm -hmm. He was asking me questions about working out and I actually designed a, a routine for him. So he's, he's got like a, a bit of an individualized workout. But then we talked about his diet and his goal. <clears throat> he's a very healthy guy. Obviously, you could tell he's in his mid fifties. Looks, gr looks great. He's looks lean. very healthy, fit, lean. But he wants to put on more muscle, and he really likes to lift weights, which is just it warms my heart. I like the guy even more now. But uh, he wants to put on more mass. So I asked him about his diet, and he struggles with protein because he eats. He doesn't eat meat very often. He eats like once a once a day maybe meat, and most mm. of the time it's like vegetable based. So he eats a really healthy diet. But for optimal muscle growth. I mean, the studies are, are conclusive. You want to consume about, you know, point roughly, you know, some studies will say on the lower end, 0. 0.6 grams per pound of body weight. The higher end studies will say closer to one gram per pound of body weight. In my experience, it's closer to one than it is to 0. 0.6. So I typically recommend 0. 0.8 grams or one gram. So I told him he weighs, uh, I think it was like 165 pounds or 170 pounds. So I'm telling him to aim for about 130 uh, grams of protein, which is hard for him because of uh, only eating meat once, once he doesn't need a ton of meat yeah mm -hmm. and um and so he's like i don't really like meat that much so i said well okay here's here's a case where protein powder makes a huge difference mm -hmm. you know take some protein powder and since he's you know plant-based um i you know i'm referring him to organifi oh mm -hmm. nice so he could just use organifi protein well that's what you have to use too don't you because you can't, I can't do you, dairy you can't do whey <laughs> no so all the other protein powders i've i've tried um beef protein powder before believe it or not you can actually do that what does that smell like well, it's actually, <laughs> it's not that good. Well, what's so Jeez. somebody asked me this, and this is this was more of a Sal question. Uh, uh, I normally defer uh, for questions like this because I don't know the answer. Uh, what do the studies say when comparing uh, collagen protein, uh, pea protein? Uh, 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 mm -hmm. uh, what else is uh, uh, your whey protein? Egg protein. Egg whatever. protein. Yeah. So like, so what, from pure sources, the most. Whey is the best yeah, the, for building muscle. Whey, egg are up there. You know, the egg will rank higher in some some uh, you know rankings, and because they have different classifications, whey will rank higher in others. Um, but those are the best animal proteins in general. Uh, when compared to individual types of plant proteins, they they tend they build more muscle on a gram per gram basis. Now, if you eat enough protein, it doesn't make a difference. So, if you eat a lot of uh, just plant protein. Uh, doesn't matter if it's plant protein or if it's beef. Now, here's the thing: they're comparing they're comparing individual protein sources for, to each other. So they're going like beef to just you know uh, like hemp protein. But what good plant protein uh, companies do, like Organifi, is they mix they mix different plant uh, sources that complement each other. Uh. So then you get a better amino acid profile. So it's actually pretty damn good. So you're going to get... So what is theirs combined, like hemp and pea and like, I mean, what is... Yeah, so it's, I mean, let me see. Actually, I have one right on here. Um, I know pea protein is one of the main... Uh, Did you really so, just have a fucking protein bar? Yeah, I, I was taking <laughs> this off. That's so convenient. Isn't that, isn't that weird? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, this one has uh, uh, pea uh, protein. didn't plan this. So yeah, pea, yeah. quinoa, pumpkin, uh, and pumpkin, and then they throw in, in uh, digestive enzymes, uh, you know, amylase, protease, lipase, lactase, and cellulase, which actually, that's another good... Good thing to talk about uh, uh, digestive enzymes. When you're eating a lot more protein or food or fat or carbs, 
digestive enzymes can make a, a, a big difference because one of the one of the the challenges with bulking, not now, as an adult, this challenge doesn't happen because my metabolism's not nearly as fast as it was when I when I was a kid. Oh, boy, I used to eat so much food, and if the scale moved a pound in a month, it was a miracle. But to eat all that food, one of the the, the roadblocks was like it was just too much. It was yeah. hard to digest, and I would feel like I was just eating too much food. Uh, digestive enzymes uh, can help. So if you know you're It'll listening, help and, move things along. Yeah, if you're listening and you're a hard gainer. Um, then, uh, you know, and you're eating tons and tons of food, digestive enzymes can probably help you out a little bit. In fact, I'll be, um, I think this episode drops on Thanksgiving. Is that true, Doug? So by the time you're listening to this episode, I will be eating my digestive enzymes, taking digestive enzymes <laughs> with my, uh, Thanksgiving dinner. So anyway, <laughs> dude, exciting. Uh, I went back to go to the bathroom in our, uh, Always post- exciting. in our post-apocalyptic, you know, Mad Max bathroom back there. Yeah. It's very embarrassing to send guests back there. Yeah. They're working on lots it. of spatter. Man. Oh, it's going, it's going down. I saw two, uh, two guys in there doing no. the plant. Yes, I don't believe you. I swear to God. Now, have you peeked in <laughs> you on don't the? Me. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. Uh, are they completely remodeling? Or are they going to throw some fucking paint on the wall? No, they're yeah. completely. They're they're redoing it. Like gutting the toilets. They're doing it. The whole thing. Really? I don't know the exact details, but the guy told me yeah, they're, they're, it's going to be a big job. They're going to redo the men's bathroom. It's a Thanksgiving miracle. Redo the women's bathroom. So first, the men's bathroom will be closed. So we're going to have to use the women's bathroom. Which I do anyway. Uh, which, yeah. yeah, who cares? Whatever. Uh, I'll um, leave presents in there. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just, just for, the la- for the ladies. Just to, <laughs> I blame Sorry. our bathroom on you. Okay. <laughs> Hey, well, you know, it's not me. There was a whole CrossFit gym that just left here. I hope you remember that. They've, <laughs> yeah. they've ruined everything. That's true. That's yeah. True. Well, I, speak, I came later. Speaking of you being inappropriate, you sent me a porn today. <laughs> okay? In my, in our- Tell in me our, you weren't thankful, though. Wait a minute. Is that, my, the, is, that the, is that how you're supposed to say it? Like, it, it just a porn? No, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> is it? I mean, you it sent was, me a clip this of was like, part, an, this like was an news. 80s porn video. Yeah, this was news. This no, wasn't no, porn. No, there's okay? con- you got to explain the context. Yeah, okay. Context-wise, yeah. so I, okay. So I, I didn't get it that way. I just got the fucking video. You just video. got the so video. I, You're right. I, I didn't get any deliver context. It. No just, explanation. What am I, I'm like, what am I watching right now? <laughs> <laughs> and it's awkward. Like, staff comes in. What are you guys doing? This is yeah. what we do for our job. Yeah. What, was, um, what, what was I watching? So I, I was doing, uh, in my story, I was answering questions and everything. I saw that. And there was... There was somebody asked me like my top three guitarists of all time. I saw and that too. So yeah, so I, I I went down the list. I was like Steve Ray Vaughan, you know. I was like Dimebag Daryl. I was like Chuck Berry, and uh, somebody like left me a, a DM and was like, "Dude, have you ever seen uh, this video with Chuck Berry?" And him and a prostitute and and farting. Oh, that's who that was. Yes, because the videos kind of blurred their faces. You can't tell who it is. So I looked in. So Justin sent it to me too. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, appreciate that. Hey, no, this is what I'm here for. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> apparently, there was a drug raid on his house. Yeah. So cops went in there it, a long time ago. Long this time this ago. was a long time. I mean, he's, he's not with us anymore. Yeah. And, so and they found this is totally in bad taste. They but. did the round. They did the raid. Excuse me. And they found this recording. Of him with this prostitute, where he's doing <laughs> farting is involved. Let's just say that <laughs> farting, he's weird just blasting dude. prostitutes. I just found it amusing. I didn't know that about him. Yeah, I you know he's one of my heroes. This is all new information to me. I thought like sharing it. Hey, tell me you don't love our business now that you could post something like that about somebody who you're already a fan of and yeah. some some random person it educates so you. Random. Yeah, educate you on something that you're already now, interested. How does in. video, that happens to me all the time. Yeah, how does a video like that make it to the public? Because if the police got a ha- hold of it did yeah. some asshole cop is like we gotta put this on. i know right like come on like why like yeah there must have been a reason they must have found it and we're just like dying laughing dude, and we're like people have to see this dude, i think so, I, can we link that or can we get in trouble no, no i don't no, think no, so no, I think no. people search, do your own research do yeah, your own homework yeah yeah doug, doug sh- yeah. vigorously shaking his head <laughs> but yeah there was that fun fact and then another fun fact i found out about him uh keith richards you know who that is yeah so, yeah. He, yeah guitarist for rolling stones he actually had a story too about like where he was on tour and he was another one like he he was his idol like chuck berry was his idol and so he was like kind of on tour with him on this thing and goes backstage and there's his guitar his famous guitar is just like in the you know the green room or whatever and it's by himself and so he just like he couldn't help it he went and grabbed it and just started kind of playing some chords and i guess chuck berry's like nobody touches my guitar and then Punches him in the face. Whoa! Yeah, 
like really? straight clocks him in the face. Really? Like, so <laughs> he was a uh, he was a little bit uh, uh, you know volatile. I feel like celebrities eccentric. That's how yeah. well, eccentric. Thank well, you. that's a better. So I have a theory. I have a feeling. I feel like celebrities when they're because you know, they're famous and they have so much access to whatever like, they want, people and sex. Right. I feel like they probably all do weird shit in of the course. bedroom yeah. because they're bored. Yeah. You know what I mean? Isn't, like they have, Ep- isn't Epstein an example of this for us? Well, well that's, a, that's, yeah, a, yeah, that's yeah, a, now you've taken a yeah, different. He, he well, I, I mean, the, to, the more power, the more money, the more you have, the more, the more, you just the more extreme I think terrible. it goes. Yeah, oh, and yeah. that's not to say that everybody. I'm not saying that everybody that has that every power, celebrity. Yeah, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that it. I would I would argue that it's probably. Uh, more popular mm-hmm. amongst that community of people that are extremely powerful, have a ton of money, and you, and you already have a high level of narcissism because mm. there's a need, lot. Of, a lot of the kinks come out. You yeah, have to they're... have a, a higher level of narcissism to be the kind of person that would want to, or you know, be famous or enjoy the fame. And then the fame feeds that narcissism. Mm-hmm. So then you become like, it's all good. I yeah, do, you, you know, think you're invincible. So you start pushing the boundaries on do, what's the craziest shit you could do. You start, right. You start farting up. <laughs> you start <laughs> blasting poor prostitutes in the face. What an embarrassing yeah. video yeah. to come out. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not like a, it's like a normal video. That's somebody's grandma now. <laughs> oh, it's <geez. laughs> oh, yeah, This is a very, that, very that, true fact. That's right? all I can think about right when right I watch there. you. I'm like, yeah. this is someone's grandma getting peed on Listening to Johnny B. Grandma. Gertrude just yeah. just taking a blast. Yeah, yeah, she comes in the room. Yeah. Oh, honey, I didn't know you liked you know <laughs> Chuck Berry. Yeah. Oh, I knew him back in my yeah, day. He was a great musician. Yeah. And did, also, how did you know him? Uh, yeah. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I can smell him now. Hey, speaking of advanced mm. age, though, did yeah. you see our uh, OCR racer that won first place in the sixty plus category? Yeah. Boom. By the way, I think advanced, how awesome is that? I don't know if advanced age is I, it's over sixty. Is it sixty or over? Yeah. Uh, Sometimes you refer to people in their fifties. <laughs> he does that, that just that for Adam. Doug. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do that to Doug. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've been fucking with Doug since we started this. Oh, yeah. People ask me all the time, is Doug really 97? <laughs> yeah. 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 He was here before I, the Marvel T. I, I change his age every time I talk yeah, about I it. No, but this guy was cool, right? So he used Maps OCR to train for an obstacle course race. Yes, Got yes. First ja- place. James Herman. Shout out to him. He's uh, over 60 years old, followed the OCR program. Went and did the race, took first. Number one. Yeah, I thought that was pretty Bam. cool. Bam. Yeah. Dude, Shout out to him. I've been watching Shark Tank uh, a lot with- uh, You have been. With I Jessica. know. That's funny. Like, you, like you, you just, just found it. Yeah, I know. Right? I know. I'm I've so, watched every one of them in, uh, a million years ago. So here's the- <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So here's the deal. When, it was that long ago. <laughs> Jess, Justin never exaggerates. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. A million years ago. Like a million. I mean, so- <laughs> So the you know, earth was still forming. I have this I have this this characteristic that I think has got its pluses and its minuses. <clears throat> One of the char- this characteristic that I'm referring to is, you know, I tend to be a bit rebellious and I don't always I don't go with the crowd automatically. So <laughs> that's a good thing because Right. So you're going to be binging Game of Thrones next year. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the bad yeah. thing is I, I tend to miss out on shit because everybody's talking about Shark Tank. I'm like, fuck that show. I'm not watching that show. Everybody watched that show. Stupid. Well, anyway, nobody's talking about it, so I decided to pick up on it. So I, <laughs> Started watching it. What a great, so many amazing learning lessons and and uh, and lines. You know, one, <laughs> Mark Cuban said something really good on there. I love Mark Cuban. That bro. made me think of uh, of our business because we've run into people like that, like that that have done this, uh, working with us or trying to work with us or whatever. Yeah. There was a, a young lady up there and she was pitching her clothing brand, and it was it was cool. It was a nice clothing brand, but you guys know how competitive that market is. It's right. impossible. Mm-hmm. And but she had one shirt that Target copied and then sold, and then that got her lots of popu- popularity. So one year she had all these sales, but then the following year they started to drop. So she's up there, she's trying to negotiate. I don't remember what the amount was. Let's just say it was a hundred thousand dollars for for ten percent, which means it's got a company has a valuation of a million, right? And so she's trying to do that, and then uh, I don't remember who it was. One of the sharks says, "I'll give you a hundred thousand." But I want thirty three percent of your company. She's like, no, I can't. And I'm watching this thing. I'm like, you idiot! Without them, you'll go nowhere. Sixty six percent of working with them is far worth far more than ninety percent of work or or nothing. You right, know, right, or whatever. Right. So Mark Cuban says, a hundred percent of a grape is less than sixty percent of a watermelon. What a great, <laughs> what a great Mark way to Cuban. And and it reminded me of there's been people that we see this in the fitness space. Well, they'll they'll come up with an idea or whatever, or they'll mm-hmm. come to us and we'll want to work with them. But they're so like protective that they don't want to, they don't realize the value and exposure or whatever. So like, no, I can't give any of it away. 
for any kind of exposure because it's mine, not realizing that they're going to do zero. Is this why you've been telling me fidget spinners are the next thing? No, I haven't. <laughs> He's bringing fidget why? spinners. Did I say that? No. <laughs> no, what? It's a joke. You are the most random person. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, dude that's right. like so old. I'm just sorry. It's yeah. it's an old show. Yeah. 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 He so, hasn't got there yet. It's all right. It, it, yeah. Is that your kid's invention? You were putting notes up there about <laughs> No, uh, no, no, no. So this is totally different. Um, I, I, it was funny. I was, uh, putting the kids down to sleep and whatever. Uh, and, and then went back upstairs and I heard them giggling and messing around still. I'm like, ah, and, uh, I get down there and they're like, dad, check this out. And they have like, um, uh, they have a ball from the dog has like one of those like glowing balls, you know, that like if you, if you step on it, it like glows and does all this stuff. They called it a disco bomb. So they threw it up in the air and it starts like glowing and they start doing all these disco moves. There. <laughs> it was, it was a riot. It's totally an inside joke. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm getting that right <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You had to be there. Everybody It was really funny. It was creative. I was proud of them. It's it was like, super random. I was like, that's totally me. You ever do that after yeah. telling a story? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I, I realized that as yeah. I was that's uh, like a dad, That's such yeah. a dad moment right yeah. there like that was so like, oh my god so brilliant yeah, disco was, bomb yeah. hilarious <laughs> are you are you doing that yet adam not completely that completely yet i haven't caught myself telling retelling the story <laughs> but i i mean so last night katrina uh is i so I, I when she does the bath like she gives them a bath uh at 6 30 and you know part of the route that's when i go take the bot the boys for their second walk and <clears throat> i come back in and she's like racing down the stairs she's like where were you i was screaming for you oh my goodness and she's so she's she had him giggling in the bath right and, and we're like at this point right now where we get little flashes of it and she said he was going like crazy and i was screaming your name to name to come in there and it was just like this big ordeal that we were making right yeah. over the, and obviously all parents listening right now can relate i can also relate being a single or a guy that doesn't have a child because it wasn't but six months ago i didn't and i would think that story is just ridiculous and silly so i don't share it with anybody else yeah so i have moments like that where to you as a parent so what i'm saying is share them <laughs> yeah is what i'm saying yeah i, I remember they doing make that. me feel better yeah you're like oh my kid dude he lifted his leg up like yeah, five it's, times it's like a, it's <laughs> such a basic thing like, you know he, I mean? he's yeah. gonna do a lot more than giggle over the course of his lifetime dude, right now i got him to i got him to laugh a little bit the other day you actually got him to laugh the most mm, which uh which is I, you know dang. what are you gonna say well i told katrina you're giving i said him a big head now, i know i know i said well i i told him i said um that had to probably feel really good for uncle sal because up until that point, uh, the mm. Sal's voice made him cry. I, it was one time, <laughs> so, no, or two time. times. No, that it was happened. a couple Pretty times. Much every time. Yeah, yeah. Every yeah. time he heard his voice, that's because I'm loud. Yeah, yeah he cried. But this time, I uh, win him over, dude. You I mean, but now he gets you. I mean, that's kind of like our relationship. It you is and me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When yeah. you first, yeah, you I was used just, to cry. Ah! <laughs> 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 anyway. So science time. Let me tell you guys about a cool study that I read over the weekend. So there was a study that taught that looked at the effect that leg exercises in particular, working the legs, had on the brain. And for some reason, training the legs with resistance has a greater effect on brain health than working even the upper body. Mm. So what they found was that, and I'll read, I'll read a quote from, the, from the, the article, new research shows that using the legs, particularly in weight-bearing exercise, sends signals to the brain that are vital for the production of healthy neural cells. So they're showing that in particular, strength training for the legs is important for brain health, period. Okay. Now, I like that study because it, it supports an argument that we've been making forever. But at the same point, it's kind of like a here's your sign type of argument. <laughs> like, yeah, no shit, don't you think? I know. Yeah. The fact that training the, the biggest muscles on your body is going to promote more blood flow, more oxygen, more nutrients being moved throughout your body, which is kind of obvious to me would – be healthy for the brain. Now, and I would I would even say this. I would even say training fundamental movements versus other movements have a greater effect on the brain because they're we evolved to have these fundamental movements. Right. And the complexity like running, of it. walking, right. squatting, mm -hmm. you know, movements that are fundamental to human uh, biology or, or evolution probably have the greatest effect well, of all. That or the complexity of it, right? Something that you're 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 moving, right? Where like a full body movement or a compound movement, I would think takes more brain power in order to to do that. 
synergistically I versus would, I could stand here. I'm talking to you right now. It takes a lot more output. And I could be bicep curling all day long and not even thinking about it or paying attention to it. But ask me to squat, you know, or barbell squat, like uh, it'd be a lot harder to communicate with you because a lot of my brain power is going to. Now, I think there's a limit to that because I think if you push it too far and now you're squatting on a physio ball, balancing a plate, you know, doing weird stuff, I don't think that'll send the same uh, signal to the brain or the, at least they have the same uh, type of effect. And they've done studies where they show that, you know, thinking and exercising your brain in the sense of doing puzzles and stuff like that does contribute to brain health, mm -hmm. but it doesn't contribute as much as activity. Mm -hmm. well, Moving is better for your brain than even just trying to think hard. Well, you know, there's all that re reactive sort of training too. Like I know it stimulates a lot of like cognitive what, benefits. Too. What is that? What's that game? I know Doug knows. I think it's a. It's, I think it's in Japan. Is it Japan that does it? Where they, uh, it's they 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 do all these crazy obstacles and racing, and then between like obstacles, they have like to solve a math problem. Right. What? Yeah. yeah. Have you never seen? I'm you guys not have, familiar with that. Oh, one. you guys have never seen that? No, no. Oh yeah, I think it's really it's it's like one of those crazy ones where like, like a Rubik's cube, like, like tons of people go go through it, and it's like the ones that they run through a wall, and some of the walls are are, are blocked. I love Japanese game shows. Oh yeah, they're, they're the oh. random machine. You ever see MXC? Never it's my that? favorite. Oh, I love that show. My favorite. There was one Japanese game show. I, I saw a clip of it where. These guys were drinking uh, tons of beer. They had to drink every time. And then the lo the loser was the last person to pee. <laughs> so they're trying to hold their... Uh, and they're drinking. <laughs> oh, and they're making the... Oh, I can't do it. And they're drinking. Uh, and then they pee themselves. And then they're at, you're out. That's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds like a, a game. I want to watch that. It's like a college frat you <laughs> <Yeah>. know, <laughs> game. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, another cool study. For, this one from Harvard. Um, this is a 75-year study. I'm actually going to pull this up because it's a big one. Oh, wow. It's a 75-year study on tens of thousands of people. Uh, uh in, in, to see what is this the, the one thing that's most important for happiness like what is the secret to happiness so this is a long study again they tracked uh I think it was like 700 800 people laughter and in love. particular that's my vote it was mm. just relationships okay well, relationships mm. in general hopefully that comes with that yeah right? good relationships keep you happier and healthier and and that one factor right there uh, is one of the most important <clears throat> factors and almost uh everything else isn't that cool yeah isn't that crazy well it reinforces everything. it's cool it's like it's, be nice to people and make friends and you'll be happy it's uh, also healthy. it's also a reminder for you know because we I, I would say we have uh an 80 percent general pop that listen to this show and then a 20 percent of the fitness fanatical people and, and i think it's a good time for this message for the fitness fanatical people that this is this is going up on thanksgiving you're probably going to be with a lot of family and friends and if there was ever a time for you to let go all of your fucking goals around, I need to look a certain way. I need to be get to my gym. I need to, and I'm not saying like fuck it off. Like I think there's nothing wrong with having a workout in the morning or whatever like that. But the more fanatical you are, and you know who you are about it, it's probably even more important that you're the type of person that lets go of a lot of those things and really puts a lot of energy and focus. And the reason why I think I could speak to this because I was like this. Uh, totally, I, same uh, here. I could, I mean, shit. I uh, th uh, three, four Thanksgivings ago, I was standing on a stage. You know, I was not even at Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. so I complete. And I, I vowed to never do that again. Right? I remember going through that with Katrina and uh, what a trooper she was. To what, be a, down what a dumb time to put a competition on. It was, and my yeah. str my thought process. Okay, so the strategy. Yo, I'm gonna get first place. Is two competitors? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I really. It was gonna be thick. Yeah, I was fucking wrong. It was completely wrong. In fact, I think it was like one of my. They worst, all had the same idea. One of my, yeah, it, it was. Why? It was a big show, and it was one of my worst. Because places. you probably had a bunch of fitness fanatics who were like, "This is a great way to not get fat on yeah. Thanksgiving." No, no, I'll avoid it this way. It was it was so opposite what I expected. It was one of my worst placings. I, it was my first pro show. Um, I, I liked my physique, but I would I didn't do well. Uh, in that, but my point of that is, I understand, so I know what it's like to be on that side. I'm also somebody who works like crazy all the time. It's uh, and uh, because I had uh, a less than uh, you know normal, I guess, childhood growing up mm -hmm. with my family and stuff. That's already a hard or a work for me. So you know, if you're that person, if you know that, if you if you if you don't spend a lot of time with family, don't do those things or friends. Uh, this is the time to really... And, you know, Bishop Barron really said it well when he talked about... He called it spiritual physics, where the more you pour out of your heart, the more full your heart gets. So it doesn't empty because you're pouring it out. That's actually the only way that it, it gets filled. And the reason why I'm saying that is, you know, when you go to these your, your Thanksgiving or 
you're with your family for holidays, rather than going there and thinking, you know, I'm going to kind of protect myself from this person, that person, go there and give love. Give yeah. love and be open hearted, regardless of who it is, and just forget the fact that you're different, that they're different, that they may annoy you, that whatever. Just go there open. And I've done this now probably for the past few years. Um, and it's what a different experience. To mm -hmm. that point, you just reminded me of something that hit home for me. Uh, on I, it was the I think it was when we were down at the Bishop Barron uh, talk, but I think it was Arthur Brooks that actually brought this point up. And he was talking about when he gives to the poor. And instead mm -hmm. of just giving them money or just handing them food and then walking away, this was big. Mm -hmm. He asked for them to pray for them. Now you could be listening to this right now, and you may not be a believer in God, or you don't have you don't have a, a religion. That's that, not the point. It, it doesn't matter. The point of why he why that was so important was you have somebody in that situation that pretty much feels worthless to the point where they're okay with begging for food or money. To, they feel like they have no place. Right. They're not needed. Nobody mm -hmm. needs them. Right. And he says, by flipping that on its head, you know, and you and you give food or money or whatever it is that you can to that person, one of the, the greatest things that you can give them is by empowering them to do that and make them feel needed. It gives them what's called dignity. Mm -hmm. and you ask them to do something for you. So it's like you go up, you give them five bucks and you say, by the way, I did this. I did this. Uh, oh, you already did it since I did, I did it yeah. the other day. Oh, wow. I took my mom to lunch and it was on Sunday and uh, we're eating sushi or whatever. And I see a couple, you know, dudes sitting out there and I remember mm -hmm. him saying that. And so I did. I went up to the guy and I gave him five dollars and I said, uh, and my kids are traveling at the moment with their mom. They're going to go, they're going to visit her boyfriend. And so I thought it would be probably more impactful to be specific mm -hmm. rather than to just say, hey, pray for me. All oh, right. So I gave him the five dollars and say, hey, as I'm handing him the five dollars, I said, hey, can you do me a favor? I said, can you pray for my kids to travel safely while they're with their mom? And the look on his face was, I mean, almost I'm getting emotional right now thinking about it. The look on his face was totally different because he, he, he felt like he could do something. I get it. You know what I mean? I totally know what that, what that, of course I can, I can see the power in that. It's oh. just making them feel like, and, uh, uh, I forgot who else talks like about they're this. seen, acknowledged and have purpose. It's, like, it, it's all those things. They can do something for you. Well, yeah. we, we, we know that one of the most important things in, in life is to have a purpose, right? And that's part of what have, being a father or being a mother gives most people that may not have had one before. Like right. that's why people say that having children is so amazing. Meaningful. Yeah, and so meaningful because for the first time in my life, I now have a real purpose. Mm -hmm. I have this this child. So you're giving that. You're giving that when you do that. You well, can just giving them food gets them by and survives. But giving them purpose and by asking something in return is incredible. And the boy, I mean, when he said that, it would just well, fucking hit right through. Hard. It makes so much yeah. sense. Hard, right? Right mm -hmm. through. And, and it, it makes it makes so much sense because I know what that – I could imagine what that would feel like. I could imagine what it would feel like to, re, re, uh, to need people to give me stuff, yeah. but to also know that I – have nothing like to give we're anybody. Equals. We're equals. It's, it's a respect thing, too. Yeah, yeah. I feel valuable. I feel yes. like I have some value. Um, no, super, super powerful. When I did that, and the, and the dude, the way he looked at me, um, it was almost like at first he was confused, and then he, he had this look, and he's like, yeah, I'll do that for you. I was like, wow, man, I feel so- Super cool. Yeah, so cool about that. You know what's funny about that talk? Bishop Barron tells a, a hilarious story about, I forgot what cardinal it was, but there was a cardinal that was mm -hmm. at a fundraiser, and he's trying to raise cardinal money. Cardinal Nicholas? I don't. No. I don't oh, remember. Yeah. He was trying to raise money for charity, and apparently this cardinal is just very blunt. You know the way he says things. Yeah. yeah. And so he's telling all the the you know the the billionaires in the room or whatever to to donate to this charity because these poor people need billionaires like you. They need your money. And he goes, and you need these poor people to get into heaven. I thought that was the funniest thing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought yeah. that was such a good line. You know. That's yeah, perfect. Yeah. It's so it's so cool. I remember anyway. that. Now. That was great. First question is from Erica Olson. What are some good stretches to increase squat mobility? Oh, good timing for this question. Yes. I just, uh, I know I've been, I think I've said it already two or three times on the podcast and I've been getting, I should, I got to be careful not to do this when I tell people something's coming or whatever, because yeah. I shot the video like fucking three weeks ago, but I do know that it takes process for us to get everything, you know, wrapped and edited and we have videos that are already lined up. And so I announce some shit and then it takes a while, but today, okay, it will already be up because it, it actually went up uh, yesterday if you're listening on Thursday. So uh, I just did a uh, combat stretch to uh, increase squat depth video, right? Yeah. Video on that. And, uh, 
when I think of the all the different because there's there's a lot of things that you can do and it's very individualized, right? So this is obviously this is we're 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 speaking uh, to specific issues that I've had, but I know that this is a very common in people. So. I would say this is probably common in a majority of people who need to work on. I, I agree too. Okay. So that's why that's which is why I started with this one first because <clears throat> when I think of all the mobility drills uh, and stretches that I did to improve uh, my squat depth, uh, by far. Uh, the combat stretch for my ankle mobility has been the biggest uh, game changer. Uh, and so I did a video on that. And I would say the a close second to that would be working on my hip mobility with the 90-90 variations. Mm -hmm. So the combination of those two uh, for my lower body has been a game changer. I can definitely speak to the ankle mobility, especially watching too. I remember we, we held a seminar in here and Dr. Brink kind of made an example of this, of somebody who had re very limited squat depth and uh, basically took them up front and was like, okay, but I'm going to have you now with elevated heels and raise you up substantially and let's see and no problem, like super comfortable going all the way to depth mm -hmm. and just completely highlighted the fact that the ankles were, you know, the, the, the limiting factor there. I used to think um, it was the hips. I, and not to say that the hips don't play a role. There's definitely issues with people's hip uh, mobility that causes them problems when they squat. But I used to think that that was most of the issue. I have since changed my mind and realized that it's mostly ankle mobility issues that's the problem. 100%. And you can test this yourself. So if you're listening to the podcast right now and you find that you have difficulty going to depth, try squatting while you're up on your toes. And you'll find all of a sudden, boom. You hit the ground, uh, no problem. This is why squat shoes mm -hmm. um, or placing a block under the heels helps because when you lift the heels, my ankles don't have to uh, they don't have to flex as much, and so now I can go down lower. Well, this just goes to show you how much this is a, a common problem. Super that common. Something like squat shoes became a thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's I mean, common. If it, if it's it was if it wasn't common amongst almost everybody it wouldn't have become something that's a, a standard piece of attire you wear when you're squatting for max load. It's common because we almost never get our ankles in that position in regular everyday life. Right. You know, I mean, sitting, you're kind of in a squatted position a little bit, I guess, um, but you, you, you did do nothing for your ankles, especially if you wear shoes with any kind yes. of a heel. Yes. Any kind Which of a heel. very common. Right. So running shoes, even tennis shoes, you know, comfortable shoes. If you look at your shoe right now, like I have a pair on right now and I look down at them, I notice that the heel is going to be a little bit higher off the ground than the front of my foot. Now, why is that? It's because shoe manufacturers have designed shoes around people's ankle mobilities, and it just feels more comfortable than a shoe that's completely uh, flat. Now, women, if you wear high heels and you wear those a lot for work, yeah, even worse. Even worse, and you you really start to your your body starts to form and shape around the way you move in everyday life, and so you lose ankle mobility. So the combat stretch done properly. So when we're going to attach that video to the show notes of this episode. Um, watch and listen carefully because when you're doing a mobility movement like uh, like the combat stretch, um, intention is key. It's not just about going through the motion like you'll see Adam do it in the video. Don't just copy him, but pay attention to what he says and how you need to activate and where you need to pull up on the toes and mm -hmm. what how your you, knee's doing and yeah, the whole process. Yeah, that makes uh, all the difference in the world. So I would say start with the, with the ankles. Then I would say go up to the hips. And work on, uh, you know, 90-90 is a great position because it works on what's known as internal and external rotation, meaning mm -hmm. the front leg is turning out, the back leg is turning in or you whatever. You kind of cover both bases that way. Yeah, and then you'll switch sides, and that'll help work on the, the your hips' ability to stabilize um, while you're squatting. And I think those two things in uh, a majority of people, uh, there's always individual variants, probably uh, will be a good prescription. Agreed. Next question is from Captain Jake Spara. I work as an Uber driver and my butt and hip hurts from sitting for so long. Are there any short exercises I can do in between trips to relieve my pain temporarily before getting back to work? Uh, this reminds mm. me when I had uh, bursitis in my hips. It would get so bad mm -hmm. that I couldn't go longer than a 30 to 45 minute drive without having to pull over and get out of the car and do some stretches oh, wow. because it was hurting so mm -hmm. bad. I mean, it literally feels like someone who was taking a blade 
and just sticking it right in the side of of my hip. Mm. Yeah. And it is if and anybody who's who's dealt with uh, bursitis in their hips um, or just a really really tight IT like you for sure uh, know what this feels like. And and people that sit in a car and drive a lot, uh, especially as we age, uh, this is super common. And you know the it's funny we made this transition from the last question to this question because what i'd say about the combat stretch being the most important thing for the squat uh, depth for me uh, for sure the 90 90 for this mm. so uh, mobilizing the hips because you're sitting in this you're sitting in the sagittal plane while you're driving and what would actually really would really bother me is that just the little bit of movement left and right that I would make with my off the gas and brake type of deal with my foot, mm -hmm. that's what would light up that whole that whole hip and make it feel like a knife. Yeah, was that entire fascial line coming up. Yes. that's why too. I I also tend to like uh, like Eldoa, and I don't use a lot of the Eldoa moves, but you know one in particular I'm always coming back to because I'm you know in traffic all the time. I'm in that fixed position and I'm not like in full extension of my leg. And then I'm also doing a lot of this plantar flexion and then internal rotation. Um, you know, I'm trying to then, you know, get in this position where you're laying on my back and then my legs are completely against the wall. And so, you know, then I'm turning my toes in and I'm like, like basically the, unwinding. We have a video of that. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's the one that got shared on Joe Rogan, which I love. That's I a, love that that's so a, much. That's a really, that's a really helps good my back, my hips. So like, yeah, we'll, we'll attach that to the show notes too. So people yeah. can see that. Look, and, and here's a real general thing you can do every time you pull over, uh, in between trips or to use the restroom. Um, even some sets of some general lower body exercises like squats and lunges and some hip abduction. This is like where you're standing straight up and you keep your legs straight and you bring it out to the side, something like you might see a dancer do. Just doing some simple exercises every hour or two, like, you know, when you stop to go to the bathroom or again, you know, in, in between trips Listen, or whatever, makes I'm, a big difference. I, I'm, yeah. I'm big on measuring things like this. So, uh, and I was able to do this. Like I, like I gave you a time. I know that time because I literally have measured it. Like it, it's enough times that I go like, it's, it's right at the 30 to 45 minute mark, guarantee I'll feel like I have a, a, a knife sticking in my hip if I didn't put my work in before I, I went into this. So uh, something we didn't mention either that I used to do a lot of and, and I noticed a, a ton of help was soft tissue work like on my IT and mm -hmm. piriformis. Mm -hmm. So roll, Get roll a cross ball. Yeah, rolling, rolling the uh, uh, it and rolling the piriformis will help release all that, and then getting into my ninety. So those those are the main things. So I would roll the it, I would roll the piriformis. I would do some ninety ninety transitions. Literally, that you're talking about five to eight minutes worth of work, real quick before I got in the car. Night and day difference. You yeah. will notice a significant difference. And this is a good message for people who work long hours and sit at a desk. Right. You know, if you're sitting at, at work for 10 hours, um, I used to tell some of my clients, I would say every hour or every 90 minutes, get up and do about five minutes worth of, worth of just exercises, stretching, mobility work. That's all, just five yeah. minutes. And there's some side effects to that. Besides the fact that they had less pain and they felt better, they actually were more productive. Um, because as when you get up and start moving, you start producing chemicals in the body that uh, in, uh, that increase wakefulness and productivity. I also wanted to add too that I noticed like when I was constantly hydrating and focusing on like getting more water, like it really helped uh, mitigate a lot of the pain. Next question is from T. Calaman. What is the most effective way to bulk? What are your guys' secrets or perspectives on trying to bulk up? All right. So step one with bulking is this. Have Step a good worker. workout. Have a good workout that is sending a muscle building signal. Because if you try to bulk on a workout that's not effective, you will just get fatter. Um, and when you're doing an effective workout, you don't need to push your calories nearly as much because your body wants to build muscle. So step number one, train in a way that's really effective for building muscle. Well, what is, I think we need to... what. What you mean by that, I think is really important too, is that because somebody might be listening and going like, oh, I, I do that. I, I right. have a good muscle building routine. And if more importantly, probably something you're not used to doing is the best thing you do. If That's, I was just going there. Yeah. So uh, if you think you're, you're doing something, you have a great muscle building routine or you have a great program you're following, if you've been doing that for a while, it's not a great one to be doing while you're also adding a ton of calories because the, uh, the gains that you're getting from the way you've been training 
if you've been doing that for weeks or months on end, have diminished so much. Now you increase a, a, a calorie intake, so you decide you're going to go on the bulk, still running the same routine. Well, you've already kind of adapted and changed the, the bulk of your changing. Like it, Everybody knows that you get the, the beginning of a program or the beginning of training, anything. You get most of the gains at the beginning, mm -hmm. and then it, it, it falls off, and it, it, over time it slows way down. So if you decide that you're going to make a calorie surplus – when you're at the tail end or you've been following a program for a long period of time, it, you're not giving a, a good place for a lot of those extra calories to go. You want to do something like, so if I'm like somebody who's following like a MAPS Black or a bodybuilding type of routine consistently, and I want, and I know I'm going to give myself a surge of calories, I want to make sure I switch to something like Strong, MAPS Strong, or I switch over to MAPS, something really different than the than the maps like bodybuilding type of a program because I know that that novelty again will send a new signal to the body I will get those kind of beginner type gains totally when I first start and now I'm in a calorie surplus so a lot of, so that's a that's a little secret right there totally. think, perfect storm that way right, yes. yeah. right. Send, send the right stimulus increase your calories okay so step one was the workout step two uh, increase your calories so we've been talking about that right you have to take in more calories because you're you're trying to get your body to add uh, new tissue and hopefully it's favorable tissue um, like muscle. Um, a high protein diet's important. Now that's important whether you're, whether you're trying to bulk or cut. Okay, a, a higher protein diet preserves muscle when you're trying to cut and also has a uh, much greater effect on on satiety, meaning it keeps you full longer. Um, and for bulking, you want a high protein diet because your body builds more muscle when your protein intake is high. Now, how much is is a, is the right amount? We talked about this uh, earlier in this episode. Um, about point, generally for most people, it's about 0.8 grams or one gram of protein per pound of body weight. If you're at a relatively normal body weight, if you're really obese, you can't use that number because that's just too high, right? If you're a 300 pound man, don't aim for 300 grams of protein. In that case, I would aim more for, you know, your, your lean body mass where you subtract your body fat, you know, after you get a body fat test. But in this case with bulking, you're probably somebody who is skinnier or whatever, you want to gain more weight. One gram of protein per pound of body weight. Carbohydrates are excellent for building muscle. So contrary to what some of the fitness influencers out there will say about low carb diets and you know that they're the best for everything, um, you know, and this of course on an individual basis, almost anything can be true when it comes to diet. But for the most part, carbohydrates help build muscle. They fuel. Your energy when you're lifting with weights, uh, they increase the intracellular fluid that's stored in your muscle. So you get they, they appear fuller and bigger. That also stimulates uh, muscle protein synthesis. They affect how your body recovers. You want to aim for uh, on the low end, one gram of protein uh, of carbs per pound of, of body weight. Uh, on the high end, for the faster metabolism people, two or three grams, uh, where you're eating a lot of carbs. Um, go ahead. I I, I also avoid. Um starchy and uh, saturated fat early on in my day. I don't eliminate it from my diet. I avoid it early in the day because those things tend to slow down the digestive process for me and, and it doesn't promote uh, hunger the same way as like a fast-acting carb like rice yeah. would. Uh, that And that's a, a, a secret, right? Or a that's tip that uh, I've learned of from bulking so many times over years and years and years. Uh, I used to struggle as a kid because I I'd, I'd start off with eggo waffles and peanut butter and syrup and I'd have all this stuff, but then I would just be I would From be all the fat yeah peter I'd be, out yeah. yeah I'd be so full that I didn't want anything till afternoon where uh, that's why I like doing things like uh, eggs oatmeal and like a, a whey protein shake was a, a staple morning breakfast for me when I was competing because I was hungry again for another meal within two hours then I was having steak and eggs and something else again that makes you make a great point when you're bulking uh, don't chase fat chase protein and carbs now when it comes to fat don't ch don't go for low fat stuff so when you eat your protein go ahead and eat the high fat protein sources. Right, right. Have a good good ribeye steak. Yeah, and like the steaks and the ground beef and the, and don't take the yolks out of your eggs. Eat the whole egg. And if you have dairy, have full fat dairy. Cooking but no, vegetables, use olive oil. That's it. But no need to chase fat. Chase carbs and protein when you're bulking. And it's a way better strategy. If you try to chase I'm fat, fat chaser. If, <laughs> if you think you're going to get yeah, all girl. your calories from fat and you chase fat, like Adam says, you might find that you're just not going to be able to uh, eat that much. And then the third thing I would say is sleep. Get really good sleep. Prioritize eight hours of sleep every single night. I tell you what, great diet, great workout, shitty sleep equals no muscle. 
Okay, no muscle whatsoever. You got to have the sleep has got to be a part of the formula. I'll give you another one that uh, for me that took a long time to piece together, which was um, I used to connect. You know, the more I train, the harder I train in the gym, the the more muscle that I would pack on. And one of the best bulks or times I ever built uh, muscle was when I scaled back my training. And you could be somebody like this. So just because you want to build muscle doesn't mean that all, the more you're in the gym is necessarily going to mean you're going to build more muscle, especially if you uh, fall on the side like I was, which is the fat kind of faster metabolism. Mm -hmm. I moved a lot through the day. So I was already burning a ton of calories. And then I'm throwing on seven intense workouts a week on top of a guy who already is stepping 15 to 20,000 steps. Man, it was just so hard to eat 5,000, 6,000 calories consistently. It was almost impossible for me. So scaling back on how often I was training, I wasn't training. I went from seven days down to four days. And man, I put on size like quick. Totally, totally. And it was probably a combination of two things, I would think. One, I was probably flirting in the overtraining area when I was training seven days a week. So just backing off the overtraining probably promoted some muscle growth. And then two, cutting out three intense workouts was now saving now now is an additional you know 1500 calories to 3000 calories my body is now using now or allocating over to building muscle so if you're somebody who can relate to that where you struggle with getting enough calories uh to to bulk up maybe assess how often you're training in, in the gym and maybe scaling back on more effective mm -hmm. workouts than driving the intensity uh, uh, thing. All I'll time. add one last thing, uh, creatine. Take creatine, great supplement for most goals, but especially for building muscle. Most people respond really, really well to creatine. Uh, a two to five grams a day would be enough, um, but it does put muscle on your body. Will not replace uh, the, your diet and your workout and your sleep. It's not going to give you the same effects as those things, but as far as supplements are concerned, creatine does help build muscle. Next question is from Carolina Maspoli. Do you think that food affects your brain and mood? Uh, totally. 100%. Yeah. Oh, my God, 100%. Now, the obvious is the physiological effects, right? The obvious is if I eat a healthy diet, then I'm going to have a healthy body. My brain is a part of my body. So having a healthy body also probably means I have a healthy brain where it, the, it's getting the nutrients that it needs. Um, inflammation is low. And like any machine – if the machine itself is clean and well lubricated and healthy, then it's going to operate better. But that's, that's the obvious one. There's the less obvious one that I think a lot of people don't address, which are the the psychological effects that food has mm. on your mood. You ever you ever watch somebody eat a food that they you know that they had uh, like when they were a child and it was like one of their favorite foods, and then eat it again, you see their face light up oh, and yeah. the energy. Um, you ever watch somebody or experiences yourself where you reach for certain foods when you're feeling certain feelings, like sad. A lot of people eat their feelings, right? That's the that's the term. <laughs> uh, food has a huge effect on mood, and when your when your mood makes you want to eat a particular type of food, there's typically a a positive feedback loop where I'm sad, therefore I'll eat this food. This food makes me feel a little better, but then I start to feel sad again, which then drives me back to eating this food, and it kind of starts this, this well, cycle. Well, what also about avoiding high inflammatory foods and the inflammation and what that does? And when you have systemic inflammation, that doesn't just happen in your legs and arms. That happens all the way up into your brain, too. So if you get inflammation up in there, that's going to create that kind of cloudy fogginess or you're not as sharp or on point, which is why some people – make this like when they eat like on a uh like a low carb type of a diet where that's a that or like a carnivore or a ketogenic they talk about one of the things they notice is oh man mental clarity yeah. or i felt that was so sharp Carbon benefits right because because you went low carb and you were probably you probably had some sort of inflammation from some of the carbohydrate foods that you were taking or you had a inflammatory response from something that you were probably eating before yeah. and now you're no longer doing that that's what's making you feel Sharp. It's not the the steak that made mm. you feel sharp. It's the you're not taking in high inflammatory foods anymore. That's what's giving you that mental clarity. Or you are consuming like shitty like carbs. Like you're getting it from bad sources. Like for I remember like I was under the impression that uh, you know the the more carbs like equals energy, and so I would like load my body with all these carbohydrates before the game. And of course, what that looked like was that explains a lot stacks of pancakes <laughs> <laughs> and, and syrup and you know bacon and all this stuff like in excess but like the majority was like pancakes and i'm like trying to stack all this as energy and then get into the game and it was it was again it's the brain fog that that, 
that, that occurs. And then it's at halftime, no energy. So it was just like, I was like shooting myself in the foot. Yeah, well, the, now, now there, it's funny you brought up, you guys are bringing up inflammation and all that stuff. But uh, so I pulled up a study from Harvard uh, University. So this is accepted. Uh, you know, this is a, obviously Harvard is a, a, a Western college. And they found in their studies that the Mediterranean style diet and traditional Japanese diet, which, um, you know, I'll, I'll caution people to think that there's a secret to those particular diets besides the fact that they're whole food based diets and they probably don't overeat. So when you look at those type of diets, they're high in whole natural foods and low in heavily processed foods. Nonetheless, those two diets result, according to these studies, in a risk of depression that is 25 to 35 percent lower than people who eat a traditional, you know, Western American type diet. That's a big decrease. Yeah, it's huge. That's a quarter to almost, you know, almost two uh, two quarters of uh, uh, of, of people have a lower risk of, of depression or does it that much of a lower risk of depression? It's pretty I, it, insane. You you made a point too that I think is, is probably, and I, it's hard to measure something like this, but m most people I, I think can relate or maybe they're just not as connected to this, but when you you eat, you overstuff yourself and you, you feel bloated, like it, it changes my mood. I mean, it, I, I not only does my stomach feel, oh, totally. I feel lethargic, but then I also feel lazy, unmotivated. Yeah. Then after that, people. right? I don't feel I don't feel good about myself. So it changes my entire attitude. I'm not. Uh, I don't eat a, a big old you know double cheeseburger, French fries, and a milkshake and feel motivated to go get work done in the garage. Like that doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. But I do feel that way when I eat something really light and lean, and it's like full of vitamins and minerals. Like if I have something like that, and it and it fulfills me as far as what I if I was hungry. But it doesn't stuff me, and it's not like a feel bunch energized. Of, yeah, I f and my body digests it quickly. Yeah. You can see, you can feel that, that that makes a difference in my mood. It's, it's crazy to me that uh, you know when you go to the doctor and you have, let's say, you you have uh, ADD uh, as an adult or your kid, um, or somebody's depressed or they're anxious, they're suffering from anxiety. It's crazy to me that the first. Well, I guess it's crazy, but then it's also understandable. It's crazy to me that the first thing that they don't recommend are dietary changes because yeah. what you eat, what you're putting inside your body every single day has got to have one of the largest impacts on your physiological health. Now, here's why it's understandable. Probably impossible to get uh, patients to adhere to that advice, right? They're going to come into you. I have all this anxiety and you're like, okay, I want you to totally change your diet. Yeah, right. Give me a pill. And I'm cool. So I can I can kind of get that. But the reality is how you eat has a massive uh, impact on how you feel. And it, if you're being totally honest with yourself and you're listening right now, I think you know this to be true. You can think of particular foods that make you feel a particular way. You can... You can uh, attach how you feel yeah. to having poor digestion. If you're paying attention. Yeah. Th I that's think true. that's really the, the biggest thing is most people don't pay attention to these things. They eat with just mindless eating. True. And then they react later and don't associate it with uh, like anything else that they've actually put in their body. Totally well, true. no, the, it is so true. And just listening to us talk right now and hearing you go about, uh, go off on it, Sal, I'm going like, you know what? Justin's right. Like. Oh, most people actually aren't connected. That's why we wrote a guide. We they wrote don't even the, know. We wrote an mm -hmm. intuitive eating guide, and this is part of the steps is to help people make that connection. And this is also what I spent a majority of my time doing with clients when they first started was, you know, okay, when you eat these foods, I don't want to tell you, no, you can't have them, but let's connect it to some other things other than the, the enjoyment it gives you. That ice cream hits your mouth while you're watching your favorite TV show, and, and it it's, tastes ooh, good. it tastes so good. Mm -hmm. But then, the, then, you, then you stop there. You don't go. But then you have runny shits. Right. Well, no, seriously. <laughs> you don't think about, you know, what was your stool like for the next 24 hours after you had that? What was your sleep like that night? What, what was, was your, your mood like? What was your mood like? What was your energy level after that? Like, were you bloated at all? Like, starting to attach all the negative things that this one thing gives us pleasure wise. It gives mm -hmm. me pleasure because it tastes really good. That's just one of the attributes that food has it's for so us. It's so funny. When I used to train clients, what a great point you guys are making. When I used to train clients, one of the ways that I would help them start to believe me and start to pay attention was if they had kids. Because here are these people who are like, nah, food doesn't really affect my mood or whatever. And then I would ask them a couple other questions. Then I'd come back and be like, hey, do your kids act differently when they eat different foods like a lot of sugar or whatever? Oh, yeah. Like I give... <laughs> Tommy, if I give him some candy, he's running off the walls, right. and about an hour later, he's a little shit. It's blaringly obvious. Yeah, and I'm like, well, do you think that you're any different than your kids? And then you'd see the look on their face like, oh, I guess 
I guess you're right. I guess that could be totally happening to me. Mm-hmm. So absolutely affects your food, uh, affects your moods. Look, it's Black Friday sale right now. This is the biggest sale we run ever all year long. Here's how crazy it is. Ready for this? 50% off all of our programs except for MAPS Powerlift. All others half off. All programs, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Prime, MAPS Prime Pro, MAPS Anywhere, MAPS OCR Strong. I mean, all of them, 50, half, 50% 50% off is a very short time. All of our guides and mods are also 50% off. Now, here's it gets even crazier. Ready for this? Yeah, tell me, Sal. Our bundles, this is where we take multiple MAPS programs and we put them together. So we have like bundles of three MAPS programs, four MAPS programs, or more. Those are already discounted. We already take those 30 35% off retail. You can get an additional 25% off those bundle bundles all during the Black Friday sale Here's what you do to get those discounts, okay? Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code BLACKFRIDAY50. So that's B-L-A-C-K-F-R-I-D-A-Y-5-0, no space. That's the one you use for the 50% off all maps, programs, guides, and mods. And then if you want the 25% off the bundles, which are already discounted, use the code BFBUNDLES. That's the letter B, the letter F, and BUNDLES. For that discount. All of this again can be found at mapsfitnessproducts.com. And this sale is for Black Friday. It will end at midnight on Friday. So take advantage now. Go get it.